everyone, it's Dawn here and welcome to my channel. Now I know on a Friday I usually do my weekly roundup, but I'm not going to do that today, I'm going to do that tomorrow instead. I've just come on today especially to let you know about these lovely paints. Now I have to tell you right from the beginning, this is not a sponsored video. The SAA or Society for All Artists are not sponsoring me to do this. It's just that I am a member of them, I have been for some time, and I brought their paints for the first time they I ordered them and they came yesterday, next day delivery, absolutely fantastic. And they are so wonderful, I've never come across paints as rich as this, they are so good that I did ask their permission to do a review on my channel. And so I have got their permission, but they're not sponsoring me, so I do have to let you know that straight away. So now we've got the legal bits out of the way, let's get on with the paints. I'm not going to do a painting, I'm not going to do a picture, but I just want to show you the richness of these gorgeous colours. I've even got some of their brushes. They do several ranges of brushes but today we're going to focus on the paints maybe we'll do the brushes another time but today we'll just focus on the paints and i'm just going to start with one of their round brushes where's my round brush oh there it is and i'm going to show you how rich these paints are i'll start with a cobalt blue oh just before i do that actually i will show you how i like to store my paints i squeeze them into an old this is an old pan tube or an old pan case i don't use pans but i got this Oh, some time ago now, but I just like to keep all my paints. I squeeze them into here in the same. They're all each one's in the same order each time, so I know what's where. Well, in theory, anyway. And I like to keep them there. And the beauty about keeping your tube paints in a pan is when you're done, you can this lid locks down, and it keeps them moist. And you can just use them whenever you need. They'll stay in there for some quite a long time. And that means you don't waste any, you don't have to throw away any leftover paint on your palette. You can just close the lid, open it up, and away you go the next time you start. And you've got more mixing area on your palette if you don't have to put paints out. So that's just a quick way of how I do my paints. So anyway, and what I do, I show, I'll, I'm not going to show you all. I actually got 12 paints all together. I haven't got them all out today. I've just got a few here so that you know what they look like. And I'm just going to put some water on my brush. I'm going to start with this one, which is the cobalt blue, or cobalt blue, however you like to pronounce it. And all I'm going to do is just touch it into the cobalt blue like that. And then I'm going to pop that out of the way. And look at this colour. It is, oh, well it would be if I actually managed to put some on. Let's try again. I'll dip it in. Trouble when you're doing your own camera work, you can't always see what you're doing. So there we go. And this was a wet in wet because the paper was already wet. So that wet in wet is quite pale. But if I pick up a little more, put some more on my brush and go straight into that, look at that richness. So if we were doing a sky, we're not going to do a sky today, but if we were, that is so rich. And when it's dry, of course, it will dry a little lighter. And if you squeeze out the brush, just wash it out and squeeze it through your fingers, you can use that brush to take out some clouds like that. So... You don't have to go in with any other colour. And because it's such a rich pigment, it will highlight the clouds much better or show them up. So the trouble with that is if you've never done it before, you think, oh, that's great. You end up taking all the clouds out and you get no sky left. So don't do that. So that's just one of them. And I want to show you the cadmium yellow, which I always keep next to my blue because I always keep them together so that I can mix my greens. And that is so strong. It is really, really good. So there is that one. So they're all strong. I've not come across any of them that I think, ooh, don't like that. They're really, really good. And if you change to something like a flat brush, which I'm going to do, this is just called a flat mate. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put some sap green on it. And with the flat of the brush, I'm just going to flick up and you can use it for grasses. And that is so rich. In fact, you can put it wet to begin with and then use more or less neat paint and go over it. Now, if you use neat paint, look at how rich and beautiful those colours are. Aren't they fantastic? And then what you can do, it gets even better. I'm just going to wash that out because the colour is so strong, you don't want to stain your brushes. While it's still wet, take, I'm going to use my liner writer brush, which is another SAA brush. It's a little bit like a rigger, well it's a lot like a rigger actually, and what you do, you can just flick for smaller, finer grasses. But not only for that, I'll tell you another good thing you can do with this brush. Let's pick up some burnt umber. 
which is another colour that I got. Oh, let's put it, pick up a bit more burnt umber. Let's load the brush with it. Now, if you just come across like that, you will get a nice thick line. But if you're painting something like twigs on or branches on a tree, for example, start it off. Let's just make it a little bit more moist. Put some more water with it. Now, as you're going along, when you get to the end, if you twist the brush like that, you will get a nice fine line. Shall I show you that just once more? So pick up some colour, pop it on, and go along and twist like that. Roll it between your thumb and finger. And you get some really fine branches like that. So you can carry on doing that. I'll just pick up a bit more colour. So you just twist like that. And you get some lovely fine lines. So they're really good. And because these pigments are so rich, you'll get a lot out of them. Now there is a really big one. I'm not going to use that today, but that's a big wash brush. It's called an easy flat, but I won't use that one today. It's about a 25 millimeter brush, but it really is long. So if you're doing these big broad washes, it's good for that, but we won't use that one today. But I just want to show you some of the earth colors just quickly. I'm going to use the yellow ochre. Now that is really strong. Yellow ochre usually is, but this one is fantastic. I know I'm running out. Of... Let me just pop that up there a bit. Oops, there, like that. Isn't that lovely and rich? Gorgeous colours. We could do some fabulous paintings with these. And they're good for mixing. So let's do a mix. Let's just do a very quick mix. Last one. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring my... If I put that there, then you can see what I'm doing. How about that? So I'll just pick up some yellow. This is cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to swish it around like that. And we're going to mix it actually on the paper. I'm just going to wash my brush out because I don't want the yellow going into me blue. Then pick up just a spot there of cobalt blue or cobalt blue. Swish it into there like that. And you have got a delightful green. Just keep mixing and it will go nice. That's like a nice olive green. Now, if you want that to go darker, if you want a nice dark green, what you can do. Over here I've got some Payne's Grey. I don't use black, but I've got some Payne's Grey. Just a tiny spot on your brush, just like that. Mix it in and that will go quite dark. So that's not as dark as it could go. So there you've got a nice dark green. Just And if you wanted to, you could even use some sap green. This is sap green. Put it on top just to use a manufactured green. You can get all sorts of greens out of these. Now, because this is practice paper, it is beginning to pill a little bit. It's beginning to lift. I'm using SAA practice paper which I don't think I mentioned, but SAA practice paper, very quickly, it's a, uh, I'm not saying it's an inferior paper, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's a lower grade paper, shall we say, and if you want to use it for trying out new subjects before you use your best quality paper, this is great, it comes in loosely, it comes in loose sheets, and you buy it, it's quarter imperial, so it's quite a good size, and it comes in a variety of sizes, or quantities, so in the catalogue it gives you quantities that you can buy it in, and it's quite inexpensive, and it's good for card making. So if you do card making, I know some of you do, it's good for making your cards because it's a lot better quality than the card stock. So if you're painting your own Christmas cards this year, this is the stuff to get. So as I said at the beginning of this video, this is not a sponsored video. I have asked permission and I have got permission to do a review of some of their products, but mainly their paints. So that's what I've been doing today. So I hope you've enjoyed this and found it interesting. If you're interested in the SAA, do pop over to their website, which is saa.co.uk, and you can find out all the information you need about them. So thank you very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. And until I see you tomorrow for my weekly roundup, take care, stay safe, and have fun with everything that you do. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.